Hello, this is Moze Jacobs, I think I'm called, uh, for the Barra Spoken Word. And I'm going to talk with Nick Smith also for the Barra Spoken Word. And the occasion is that on the 11th of October 2023, the Barra Spoken Word has its 10 year anniversary. And uh, someone who was there when it started, because he started it actually, and he's, that's why he's sometimes called the Godfather. Um, <laughs> Not sure how much he likes that. Um, he is going to be invited to tell us how it all came about 10 years ago and still going strong. Let's put it that way. Well, thanks, Moza. Thanks for giving me the opportunity of uh, just recapping, I suppose, uh, what has been a 10 years that seems to have disappeared exceedingly quickly uh, and has been full of quite good excitement and uh, a lot of sharing, a lot of caring, a lot of um, new work, and uh, it's it's all been uh, just an amazing ride, uh, to be honest. It started in June 2013, when the Tiger National Players uh, were taking part and organising the uh, Clonakilty Organic Arts Festival uh, with Kieran Doyle, uh, I think, either as one of the leaders or one of the main leaders. And so we met in De Barras, um in June that year. and. Um, I suppose it was just that the buzz uh, was 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 quite was quite uh, interesting, and I suddenly realised that writing uh, prose or poetry can be quite a solitary um, procedure, and to actually be able to bring your work out uh, in front of uh, an audience uh, was quite a necessary thing because it get, it lends a validation uh, of your work, support of your work, sharing of creative ideas, etc. Um, so that was the initial. Uh, thrust was to say, can we actually get this this uh, event uh, up again? So, in August, I approached uh, Ray Blackwell of Tabaras and put the idea to him that we'd have a, a monthly poetry prose evening, and uh, he very kindly jumped on the uh, the opportunity and gave us uh, access to the Tabaras Folk Club at the back of Tabaras Bar, and the first meeting took place on the first of uh, October was very well attended. Uh, there were quite a few readers. And if I can just get this one of these documents up, I'll just be able to tell you exactly who who took part. The speakers were Moses Jacobs, interestingly enough. Really? Ian, Ian Wilde, uh, myself, Michael Ray, Annette Skade, Simon Butterworth, Elaine Murphy, Afrin McGlinchey, Jean Gutteridge, Roger Cultural, and Trace Trace Irwin. Oh wow. Is that, is that all a blur to you? No, yeah, yeah well, I, I, I thought I sort of jumped on the bandwagon like months later. I didn't re I didn't realize that I'd been at that reading at all. I mean, yeah. there's some certain moments I remember because I remember that one day I, th I thought, oh, I'd like to do an interview because I used to be a journalist and do interviews and enjoy that in some ways. And then I know that that was... I asked different people and they all reclined, declined. <laughs> and then there was James Waller there, who is now mainly known as a painter, but he, he was there as a poet, Australian, living in Clonakilty, still in the, very active in the Community Arts Centre. And he said, yeah, why not? You know, he's really cool about it. And that for me, that was like, oh, yeah, that was a beginning of something like come almost like a coming out in a way. And I don't know if you had that experience yourself with re reading for an audience and com com communicating with an audience is quite a, a big thing in people's lives isn't it sure i mean it can be a very as you say very challenging but also very very rewarding i think once you once you actually commit yourself to the the interview process and the topic and the person that you're interviewing etc uh, it can be very um i don't know just in, in, enlightening and, and and it should of course be, be good, good fun you know, rather than being set to sort of like heavy handed or whatever, you know? Yeah. I think that 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 there's always the fear of being judged negatively, I think, when, when you start it off. But I I actually have seen and I don't think you know that, but I actually uh seen you read or speak when I went once went with somebody as a guest to a Toastmasters meeting. Oh right, yeah, back in the Toastmasters days. <laughs> yeah, and you were you were actually talking about furniture or you know some something you were in, involved in at the time. So, so that was also in a, must also have been a way to to put yourself out there for the audience. 
Well, that, that actually, the Toastmasters experience started because having just, um, I said, split up uh, from my, my wife, and, uh, et cetera, uh, I felt in need of a challenge. And I was doing some um, relief work in the school uh, in Ross Carberry and went out for, for lunch with uh, some of the teachers, one of whom actually went to Toastmasters. And they were all saying, oh, I couldn't do that because that's, you know, that's far too challenging. I thought, right, that sounds right at my street of, of, <laughs> of things to tick off. So I started at Toastmasters and was with Toastmasters, I suppose, for four or five years. I was president there for two years. Oh. And then I think that that moved on. I don't know why. But then uh, then the then the Debarra's the spoken rod uh, kicked off in, in 2013. OK, I have a question about that rod. But there was I always thought that the, the that it sort of came out of the chronic guilty writers group as well. But you say you were already in the writers' group, weren't you? I think I was at that stage. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah. the library. Yeah. No, it was certainly. I remember advertising it to the to the to the right to the writers who who were there at the writing group, saying, you know, come along. And I can't remember who who did or who didn't, but uh, it wasn't actually as an insti uh, as an instigation by the actual writers' group itself. Okay. No, I understand that now. And ha had you been writing before? you to started to challenge yourself was that something you've done from childhood often? yeah i've always dabbled since i was a teenager i suppose bits and pieces here and there and then attending s certain um university courses and enjoying the whole process of, of, of writing and playing around with words i suppose it wasn't until i moved to ireland in 85 uh when i, I seriously started to use the free time that i had um to pen started off as a journal uh, and then short stories and that sort of thing and it just slowly evolved so when the writers' group um, took place in uh, in Clonakilty, it was a great opportunity to actually get out and you know again mix with other people. So this this the seeds of this sharing uh, took root, I suppose, in place in, in experiences such as Toastmasters, Clonakilty writer, writer, writers' group, etc. So uh, it, yeah, it, it was a, a dovetailing, I suppose, of several different uh, items that, that brought the spoken word together. And when the first time you actually read your own work in public, were you were you nervous? Yeah, this would have mostly been, I suppose, in to in Toastmasters. But again, you know, there was such a supportive environment um, that you know it was it was almost difficult not to uh, feel relaxed. Funnily enough, uh, especially when there's a good round of applause at the end. So yeah, yeah it's all it's all encouraging aff affirmation. Okay, and and. Lastly, I mean, was there, because I, I would assume this as well, that was there an influence by Ovel, Ovel in Cork, which has been going for, um, I don't know, maybe 30 years or something like that, run yeah, by Paul Casey. Were, were you aware of their, their, their activities? Oh, yes, indeed. And I, I've been to several of their meetings okay. uh, over, the, over the years. But obviously, the, the, A, I wasn't a committed poet, uh, or a poet at all at that stage uh, and also the, the distance meant it was like a, a, lo a long evening for that and that sent me thinking as well to well why couldn't that actually happen closer to home because I knew there were writers in the area yeah. who would possibly benefit who had the same dilemma of traveling uh, long distances etc so that was also the the, the, um, the the reason the catalyst one of the catalysts behind it again and we used the same format of a, a five word challenge just to get yeah. people go, you know. And I was thinking, well, it's, you know, we could be accused of poaching, but I thought, well, we're, we're not trying to be a veil. We're trying to be something separate that has its own existence and and its own mortality. Yeah, yeah. And uh, why, why not? I mean, what's wrong with emulating or you know? Uh, well, they say that was it um, is is the highest form of flattery, highest yeah. form of flattery, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 and if if you look back at those ten years, can you come up with maybe a couple of highlights, things that have really struck you? Oh well, to be honest, there's, there have been so many in just in terms of the you know, individual happenings at each events. Um, I suppose the thing that stands out is the the, the link up with Ovale and their Coventry mm. um, contacts who come over in the autumn. And they share two poets from Coventry come to Cork, and then two from Cork go to Coventry. Yeah. And they usually come down to they came down to Debarras the first time maybe four or five years ago pre COVID. Yeah. And you know again it was such a, a, a lovely dynamic to have 
uh, forebears of, our, of the mothership, so to speak, uh, actually coming down and sharing. They, they always bring a, a, a good crowd with them as well. Yeah. So it's different and it's lively. And they do sort of like stand out as being, I think, one of the uh, one, of, one of the major events of the year. Yeah. 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 And of course, the, there are, if you think back, there are a number of, of individual moments, like somebody you think is really shy and then they suddenly, uh, and maybe uh, I'm thinking of a specific woman and I've only seen her once, but she suddenly turned into this kind of high energy performer in front of the mic and that is one of the moments that i really enjoy for example that people you know are very different from what they seem mm -hmm. and yeah and um now i know you you, you have you know you're 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 quite the writer in your own right <laughs> <laughs> you've um you, you've won from the it's called from the well isn't it the the library oh, short from, yeah the cork, cork uh, county uh, uh arts and library Competition, yearly competition, yeah. You've won it twice with a short story. I have, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think you might be the only one, I'm not sure. And you're you're also working on your own novel. Is that something you want to talk about here? or? Uh, only in the, so far as the, it's not actually a novel, it's more of a memoir. Okay. And, and basically, without going into, into too much detail, it's... Um, le it's a uh, process of um, coming to terms with being a surviving twin, okay, uh, which is uh, has broad um, coverage on uh, it, the internet, etc. Because uh, it only became um, noticeable in the fifties with the advent of ultrasound, when suddenly they were realised there were there were two children in the womb, and when they went for the next uh, scan check, there was one. And they were saying, well, where's, the, where's the other one gone? And obviously miscarried, etc. Well, I say I won't, I won't say anything any, any more about it, but it's fairly uh, complex, and obviously it's a very personal uh, journey, which uh, I'm I'm just working on. So uh, yeah, that, that that that's the, the that's the main focus at the moment. Okay. Uh, thank you. And um, for the for the 11th of October, um, we are planning to be sort of as festive as we can, hence the aloha. And I just, you know, all the way, went all the way to Hawaii to uh, just have <laughs> a bit of fun. And I think you also went somewhere else. So what, 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 what sea are you at at the moment? What, where, sorry? The, what, what is the, what seascape do I see behind you? Is oh, that... Behind me, that's the Warren Beach. Oh, that's just Roscar. Just down the road, just down the road from where I, where I live, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, with my now personal experience of the Pacific, I think Warren Beach is just as beautiful, maybe even better. <laughs> On a good um, day. <laughs> and, um, yeah, maybe we should also mention that we, we've we had, uh, I've never talked to you on Zoom in this capacity because you did a session uh, a few years ago, but that was before COVID and we've only really started to do extensive zooming and video interviews when COVID hit us. And I think for, for a lot of people, um, COVID has been a real, you know, it was obviously a really difficult period, but having something like a writer's group or uh, online or, uh, you know, even us expanding into uh, international territory, which we did, you know, suddenly you get mm. people from all over the world that has, yeah. that has been an upside. Is that oh, it's very, very, yeah. very exciting. Yeah, very exciting to have, as you say, people from the states, from Spain. I think was it Italy? Yeah, Greece. Yeah. Lots of Greece. Yeah, yeah. It gave us a very international flavor. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should do it again. I sometimes miss that a little bit. Okay, and um, in I think what we can do for the Barra's 10th anniversary, which will be uh, emceed by Mr. Stanley, not, not himself, and I, I will try oh, to do uh, an interview with him as well. And we're going to, what, what else are we going to have that night? Are you asking me? <laughs> yes, I'm asking you. <laughs> you we, we, may be, we may be having some refreshments to care of the Barra's. 
I, I need okay. to talk. To I need to talk to Ray about getting that phone. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure what else is happening, to be honest. So. Uh, well, I, I know one thing that's happening is that Jack Kelleher will come uh, do a little bit of AI, because that was meant. He will, you know, feed some poetry into the computer and uh, see what uh, our that's collective that's intelligence that. has to say about that. Because that was <laughs> actually mentioned as one of the most fun nights we've had in the past period. Um, and uh, also, I'm, I'm going to invite as or and, and this is an invitation as many uh, people as possible who do something. Um, should I say extra? I mean, normally we have the spoken word, but obviously we've also had people who came and did a, a bit of singing. You haven't had a lot of dancing, I think, but a little bit of theatrical uh, acts would would be really nice. So we're trying to get that. And if you do have a really nice fancy dress um please take it are you planning to come in fancy dress nick i always come in fancy dress <laughs> oh is that what it is <laughs> <laughs> okay 11th of october the borough's spoken word 10 years of the borough's you're all very welcome